All right, let's restart recording. Um, so right now, let's set up the debug options. Test two, ion. And let's also set to release. My computer is spinning up. I guess people can maybe hear it. Um, I'm going to make it smaller because it's too big uh, for the testing. Let's make it like, um, yeah, something like this. I mean, honestly, it could be much smaller and still be effective at demonstrating the problem, but let's just use this. Um, okay. So let us run under the profiler. To be honest, I haven't used the Visual Studio profiler all that much, but I've used it a little bit. I normally use other tools, but um, CPU usage. Wait. Uh, I guess maybe the this one as well. But let's try that. Let's make sure we're using the right target. Okay. Sort by self. Yep. So, sixty percent is in the string interner. So for, so for people who don't know these sort of debug views or uh, profile views, what they're showing here is what is sometimes called inclusive and exclusive CPU time. And so inclusive inc includes, you know, all these top level functions are ultimately responsible for all the work that's being done. And, um, but you can see they have essentially no self time. Self time means the work that they're doing that's not just a result of other functions. So, you know, this, this function here, you, you can click it to see the distribution. But you can see there's basically, there's a little bit in this read file, but it's very quick, even though it's IO based because it's already disk cached. Um, um, and then basically the entire, the entire fraction of the code, uh, of the program is in here. Uh, and you can see you can drill down. So yeah, this is another thing you can do with this view. Um, is you can kind of drill down. So you can see Ninety-one percent of next token is spent in the string interning, <clears throat> so this would be a good thing to optimize. Um, let's just close that report. I mean, there's not much point in looking at it in more detail because it, it told us what we already knew for now. So um, let us speed that up and see if there's any questions before I jump in. Someone's asking if the profiling stuff is in the free version of VS. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of, I mean, I haven't checked, but I think, let's check the website. I think the only features that are not in the community edition are features that you don't want. <laughs> like they have weird sort of team, team features in the professional and whatever enterprise versions. Let's see what they come. Let's see what what this is. No, compare offerings. Let's see here. Testing tools. You know, if you want this garbage, I guess you uh, you have to get the enterprise version. But I don't know anyone who would use this willingly. Looks like this one doesn't have everything, but yeah. It, so yeah, I guess if you want the Samarin, which is their C sharp cross platform thing that they acquired from Miguel Casas startup, um, you even have this garbage PowerPoint storyboarding. I don't even know what this is. Team Explorer. 
So even the even this crap you get in the community. So I actually don't know what you would want from the other versions if you're a normal programmer. I think it's mostly just the licensing terms in terms of what you're allowed to do with them, right? Like, I think the licensing terms for community is if you're an individual developer, you're allowed to use it. Like if you're solo, to, even if you're a commercial solo developer, I believe you're allowed to use it. But you're also allowed to use it for teams if it's uh, open source or non-commercial. Code lens, okay. Then. I don't even know what that is. Is that their new IntelliSense thing? Okay. Yeah, so I don't, this is some new crap. Again, not, nothing I care about. But yeah, there's, I mean, you can see there's almost nothing that's not available. Um, performance and Diagnostics Hub. I don't know what the hub is, but maybe that's where they include the traditional profiler. Individual developers, yeah, anyway. So I definitely would not pay for a commercial version at this point, unless there's some licensing reasons you can't use the community version. All right, um, let's fix the interning. So let's just write a hash table. Um, so how are we going to do this? I mean, my standard, we're not going to write a, a totally general purpose hash table because all of our uses of a hash table involve only appending and deleting from open addressed hash tables, which is what we'll be using an open addressed hash table. Um, I mean, it's not hard, but it's harder than the other operations. So, um, Basically, the standard way I do hash tables in C is that I have pointer hash tables. And then if I want to have value data that is sort of lifetime managed by the hash table, I actually have that in a separate array. And then the hash acts purely as an index into an array that then owns the values, for example, or an arena even. Um, so this is just going to be a pointer hash table. And so um, let's see, and it's going to be open address, probably just linear probing. Um, so what do we need? Um, we need some keys. And we need some vowels. And I guess we need length and cap. Something like this. And Let's do map get. Um, const void key. And so um, let's do a pointer hash. And for now, we can be really dumb just to, to stub it in, but we're going to immediately replace it. Um, and just, you know, do something like this, which is not a hash function, although I've seen some people call this a hash function. Um, and I guess we want to. Oh, actually, so let me let me mention that just like with our stretchy buffer, all of these functions are going to work with a with a zero initialized thing. So we want not with a null pointer for map, but if um, you know if uh, if this is zero, we're just going to return null. And our convention is with a null with a pointer hash table is that null is a sentinel value. So you're never allowed to put a null value. Or indeed a null key for that matter um, uh, into the hash table. Well, I guess we don't need to do it for get. Um, but yes, we do this, and then um, want to do something like this, and then you do your probe and. Let's see, map keys, i equals key, 
if we have a match, match, then we return the corresponding value slot. Uh, otherwise, if this is null, then we return null because that means we hit an empty slot in our probe chain and we didn't get a hit. Otherwise, we have to increment this because we're just doing linear probing. And if we hit the capacity, then we have to wrap around to zero. And um, our invariant is, in, to avoid infinite loops, our invariant is going to be that you're never allowed to have, let me know, maybe I can put that here. Uh, you're never allowed to have, as you're never allowed to have a fully occupied table because that means that we can use an empty slot as an implicit sentinel. So if this is if this invariant is true, uh, we can have a really shitty table with a single long chain, but there's at least going to be one null slot, which is going to terminate through this. I have to probably say this to shut up the compiler. Um, what does it say? Different const polygons. There we go. Well, it doesn't really have the, the intended meaning. Let's just use this. Um, if map keys oh, <laughs> all right, um, something like this. Someone's asking why not use a linked list. Yeah, we'll be using a linked list externally from the hash table only for interning, um, but it will be using a trick that's based on some combinatorial math to essentially reduce the chance of ever needing the external chain to zero. Uh, but I can talk about that when we get there. But anyway, fast hash tables generally are not based on external chaining. The way I'll be using external chaining is kind of a, a trick that looks similar to traditional external chaining, but really isn't. It's more like an overflow chain. Um, but the problem with using external chains is, yeah, like you're, you want to optimize for the hole in one case. And uh, also, even if you don't have a hole in one with linear probing, you're very likely in, to have a hole, like a hit in the, the next couple of probes, which are either in the same cache line or maybe prefetchable or something. So as long as the capacity, I mean, linear dressing, uh, linear probing is by far the simplest uh, thing you can do and there's various things you can do to make it much better like you can do Robin Hood hashing um, to to help the chain distribution so the, the variance is much lower but we're just going to be doing this the simplest dumbest approach which as long as you have don't have too much occupancy in the table is fine like as long as you don't let the table get much bigger than say 75 percent or something um, on average you only have a few elements per chain and the variance is not great, so occasionally you have some outliers that take a lot longer. Um, but anyway, so this is what I'm showing you is the absolute simplest hash table that doesn't suck. And I really don't like external chaining. There's no really good reason for it. External chaining lets you have full capacity. Like it gracefully degrades when you have overcapacity, in fact, where every single bucket has, say, 100 elements. Uh, external chaining in that degenerate case degenerates to a linear search of a hundred element linked list, namely each bucket chain. But why would you shouldn't want to use a linked list for that case anyway. So if you keep a good, uh, decent occupancy, not too high, uh, then open addressing is always going to uh, perform well. Um, unless, unless someone is really nasty and uh, does hash flooding and exploits the hash functions vulnerabilities. So in certain servers and stuff, you want to be much more careful. But even that is nowadays mostly done by using randomized hash functions rather than actually changing the hash data structure itself. Um, why am I doing void star interning rather than string interning? Well, I'm going to be using this for everything. So I'll, I'll be showing my trick in a bit. But the way I normally do, um, the way I do it, I normally have a single pointer hash table and then I externally chain off of that using, well, I'll, I'll show it to you in a bit um, and actually um, I will make it like this 
because that's the version we'll be using probably most of the time, where you externally hash it. Um, this is a book. Something like that. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. So where were we? All right. So for putting stuff in, um, if Yeah, Sean, so with external hashing, the the trick that I'm going to be using, I think I mentioned it on Twitter the other day, is that the thing that actually is going to live in the hash table that's open addressed is going to be the string hash itself as a 64-bit quantity. And by the birthday paradox, if you have a if you have a randomly distributed hash value, there's a one in one in four, roughly 1 in 4 billion chance that you have any collision in the hash table period. And so there's a even if the capacity even if there's only 100 elements because of because the thing you're using as a key, like th there's two different kinds of hashes. It's a little bit confusing, but basically the chance of external chaining is extremely low, um, and and the external chaining is really more like a very exceptional overflow chain rather than a kind of something you expect to 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 be used normally uh, as with, as with external chaining. So anyway, let me just write the code and I'll explain it when we get there. All right, um, so for putting stuff in, let's see. So the table can be empty, and so we probably want to say something like uh, if, let, let's say, I mean, to be, let's just say 50% occupancy just to start off, which is way, way too pessimistic. Um, but if, um, let's say if, uh, if twice the length, greater than or equal to map capacity then we're going to grow um, well and, and what should we grow to something like this um, Yeah. All right, and let's say, so what are we doing for the grow? Basically, we're just going to rehash. So we're just going to create a new table. Um, um, create a new table. With the new capacity. Do one allocation. Um, and then new keys is mem, new vowels is mem plus new cap times size of void star. Um, Something like that, I guess. And actually, I'm going to, even though this is a little premature, I want to zero the keys, but not necessarily the vowels, but I'm just going to do it all in one. Why not? Um, and then we are going to go through the old table. And we're going to, actually, I guess we should just say like new map. And then swap it over. So new map, um, keys is mem, vowels is mem plus new cap plus size of void star. Um, len is zero, just implicit, cap is new cap. And then we put stuff over in that table if there is something at that slot. And 
then once we've done that, we're going to free the old keys, which is really both of them handles both uh, keys and valves buffer, and then remap. I guess at this point you can just say something like this. <clears throat> um, incidentally, intentionally, um, this is how I've structured it in the past with these sort of quick hash, like small hash table implementations. This actually handles the empty table case as a special case. So suppose, suppose map is zero initialized, then both len and cap are zero. And so two times zero is greater than or equal to zero. And so this is going to, oh, that's actually not going to work. Um, so I should probably uh, do something here like new cap is max 16 new cap. Um, Unknown size. Oh, because new cap. I guess this is really sorry. Like that. Okay. The legal indirection, right? this. Now just to make it very explicit, this should be less than that. <clears throat> and now we can do something similar to before, I suppose. Um, if, let's see here, uh, if, uh, if this is equal to the key, then we just want to overwrite the value, um, and return. The slot is empty, then um, I have to overwrite both. Actually, I can do it like this, I guess. If there's not something in the slot or it's empty, I think I'll just overwrite both of them. Um, something like this. All right. Um, let me just read this code. See if it makes sense. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. So for putting stuff in, we first make sure. Technically, this is not really. Okay. There's mosquitoes back. Drive me crazy. Um, I could. No, this is fine in any case because this is item code. 
Yeah, let's just do it up here. Um, all right. So if I do something like this, um, let's just put this back on the menu. Fly as much mouse. Oh, right. God, not the character. Uh, map get undefined. Oh, get hashed. Just make the okay. <clears throat> so that should just early out. Oops. Oh, I, and I should also go back to book <clears throat> right so it's going to hit that path as expected um, if I put something in there um, like this So we got in a zero, okay, so our new cap is now that, I think it was zero before. Uh, we make this new thing. This doesn't do jack, but it's all zero initialized, so that's great. We free it, and then we copy it over. So if you look at that now, okay, this is definitely a bug, because this should all be zero initialized. Um, catalog should be zero initializing everything. So two times new cap items. Yeah. Um, new cap times this. This is not correct. Nope. No, that should. Oh, I see. No, no. I was doing. I was doing a double, double. There we go. happens. I was both doing, I was doing the right granularity pointer arithmetic, but then I was in my math doing the wrong thing. Right, so this is all zeros. In fact, if I do up to 16, they should all be zeros. Oh no, sorry. If I do new map dot vals, um, 
Um, and then do 16. We should all be, but if I do like 20, maybe I'm lucky and there's some stuff beyond the end that's not zero initialized. Yep. Okay. Eval. And so now if I do this, I should get back this. That's not working. Let's see what that is about. Oh, we didn't increment the length. Which is probably a reason to handle these cases separately. Um, Well, that's not right either. I guess that didn't get filled in. Oh, I didn't do that here. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, what's a good stress test? I guess I can... Um, Starting the iteration at zero, which is a null pointer, and that's used as a sentinel. Um, okay, let's see what's going on there. Um, 
times if I cast this to that definitely doesn't look like a correct value. So how high did we have to go? Okay, this was already right out of the gate. Let's try to make it a lot smaller and see if we can trigger it. Um, yeah, that looks like an uninitialized value. Increment the length, set the key, which is one, set the value, which is two. Next. Okay, so this must be something really basic then. So this is one. Void pointers. Void pointers in C sometimes a little bit dangerous, a little bit too eager to become anything. Um, all right. You need to at your. No, I wrap it around, right? I think this should be fine. Oh, I don't. I see. No, I do it here, so. Yeah, no, I do it in both cases, I think. Okay. Okay, um, let's say this is good enough at least to move on to the rest. So let's, I guess, let's do a, a non terrible hash function here. Um, someone was mentioning murmur hash. I've used that in the past as well. Um, brum, brum, brum. All right. Yeah, I, I should validate this at some point, but um, let's see here. This is a 64-bit, right? So it should be. Um, let's see if that's reasonable. I mean, this is mm. let me think about that. Maybe that's reasonable. Um, let's also do a stir hash. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I guess the stuff I'm thinking about is this is probably decent. It, it seems like it's not maybe, yeah, okay, but let's use this for now. The problem is to do a good job with hash functions, you either have to straight up just use someone else's that you know has good properties, but even then you should check that you didn't screw up the implementation. Uh, in either case, you should validate your distribution at some point, and not just assume that it's good. So we should you know, probably check the distribution once we have real data from the interner and all that stuff. This is probably fine. Um, should I use F and B? The, the thing I always use for st string hashing, even though it's not super great, is just F and B hash. Um, um, what is it? Uh, F and B prime. Let's call this H in both cases. Maybe I should use memory as well, but let me just do the one I can do from memory. Um, uh, F and B init, and then F and B prime. Let's return that, which is not super great, and it doesn't have a lot of rotational mixing. Um, let me remind and see what the F and B one A prime. F and B one A is the one where you XOR first, right? Yeah. Uh, prime, prime, prime. What's the sixty four bit? And what's the init? Why can't it give me both in hex? Oh, I guess I can use this. Um, the, the only thing I have to look up from F and B, I, I know that, I, like, I know there's an initializer value and there's a multiplier, um, and maybe I'll just call it mall, which is probably more descriptive. <clears throat> so that at least I just have to look up those values. All right. Um, yeah, and you're right. I can always just mix this at the end. Um, and actually, let me call let me call this two hundred sixty four hash. Um, And I'll do a pointer hash that just goes through that. <clears throat> but the problem, I mean, the, the problem always with doing this stuff at the end is if you're straight up throwing away information from the string, then you know, you've know you already lost that entropy or whatever. You've already lost that information by the time you're mixing it. Um, but yeah, we can do that. It should be pretty much close to free compared to the rest of what we're doing here. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, if you want to do something with the mixer, you shouldn't just use it as a finalizer. You should use it in here, right? Like you should have some sort of hash mix, h and stir, right? Something like this. You, you would want to do something like that if you want to do a better job. But uh, anyway, let's just do that. And actually, I'll just do it like this because I don't want to pretend that it's higher quality than it really is just because we did the, the finalizer. All right. Um, so pointer hash. Uh, let me do this version here, where you provide this externally. Um, and then this version here uh, as well, but hashed, and then sort of the 
a nice function. This is that for you. Um, not key val. Enter hash key. Uh, not get. Does this look reasonable? Okie dokie. This is probably not the best thing ever, but um, let us proceed. Okay, so now let me show you now we're ready to actually do the string interning. Um, let me show you the trick, which is very simple. So here we're basically searching through the whole chain. What we're going to do instead is um, instead of having this, we're going to have um, uh, we're going to have a pointer hash table and um, let's see here star hash start and minus start and then we're going to this is the, the somewhat weird part but we're going to um, oh yeah and then we need this external chaining, and I'll go into why that's not a problem, why it doesn't have the usual problems of traditional external chaining. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, this is a weird trick, but basically you're going to use the string hash as both the key as far as the um, as far as this thing is concerned and as the actual hash value. Um, but forget about the hash value part. The important, the important part is that um, you're, you're reducing a, you know, an arbitrary length string to a 64-bit value, hopefully with good distribution properties, and then you're doing the hash table lookup based on that. Uh, and if those hashes match, if all 64 bits of, that, those, uh, of that, those hashes match, if you have, you know, if you have a good random distribution, so you have kind of birthday paradox kind of properties, then there is a one in two to the six, 32 chance that there's even any collision in the table at all, as long as the as long as the number of, of entries in the table is very small compared to two to the 32. So that's roughly a one in four billion chance that you have any collisions at all if you have a good hash function. Uh, and so we're still going to have this external chaining thing, but it's basically mostly going to be in a kind of very rare case and it could potentially even be removed entirely um, but is really only there as a safety hatch um, alrighty so yeah so so we're going to look this thing up and um, let's see here So basically it's the same, except now we're using this hash, like we, we've disambiguated. The way to think about it is that we've used the 64-bit hash of the string as a disambiguator for the string values. 
And so we're still doing this linear check, but now almost always, like except unless something went very wrong, this should only have at most one iteration. Um, I think that's right. And then if when we get to this point, let's see. So we're actually going to allocate, um, let's see, offset of intern stir plus this stuff and no, it's going to be the new intern. And so basically, this is the standard variable length buffer trick. We want all of this stuff, and then we want a variable amount of string data. Um, and new intern length is this. New intern next is actually. this up here is intern and then new intern stir we copy all of that crap over and we sewer terminate the buffer and then rather than doing this buff push we're going to do a um, map push hashed of Um, the same hash value as before. The thing we're going to push in is going to be the new intern. Oh, this would be a pointer. Uh, the new intern and the hash is the same as before. Well, I'll do it like this. something like that. Let me think about that for a sec. So get in a string range, compute the length, hash that, do the hashed lookup using the hash as the key and as the hash. It's a little bit of a weirdness, but this basically is using the fact that if the first thing is random, then you can use of the value itself as its hash. Then we go through that chain and um, this is always going to be like zero or one, basically, uh, except for these rare cases, assuming the hash function doesn't shit. Um, if we don't find a hit, let me just make sure the hit is right. So we check the length, and if so, we use str and comp to check the actual string buffer contents match. Yep. Um, otherwise, we allocate a new thing from the arena, and it's going to have the header plus the variable length string buffer. Fill in those fields. This links it up to the existing chain, sets the length copy over the string buffer data, zero terminate it, uh, put it into the hash table with the same key and hash as the thing before, associated with this new intern entry. It looks pretty reasonable. Um, let's test it with this guy back here. So we hash the string got out some big honking value. This is going to be null, so it's not going to find something. And it's going to request that from the arena. And it's going to fill that in, and let's go and check that it looks reasonable. So hello is five characters. Um, the string buffer is zero terminated. Now we do the insertion. We're doing the insertion with this big thing. Yep. This has to grow the first time. And now we will re intern the same thing, but it should now have something in the chain that will match. This should match too. Let's go through it. 
something like that. Obviously, this doesn't really test the regrowth and so on for the hash table. Um, but let's <clears throat> let's see if things sped up for the um, for this m squared crap before. Or if it just straight up bombs. Uh, all right, I guess that was small before. So I shouldn't be too happy about it. Um, how big was that file? So I guess that's that was taking a second before, I think. So that, that one is roughly four times faster, but let's try something really slow. Like this 16, if you recall, that one took over a minute, uh, I believe. One, in, one minute and 20. So let's see how fast that is now. Okay, so you can see this is basically as fast. Even though it's now quite a bit bigger. So yeah, it's actually one megabyte now and it's still only taking basically the same. In fact, a little bit faster. So there was just some random variance there. So let's try doing something really big like So this is how big? Okay, that's 700 megabytes. Is that right? It's pretty big. Let's see how long that takes. It's probably gonna. That has to be a bug. Because there's no way we can read that that fast. Right? So that's suspicious. Oh, we're still just running the test. I'm such a moron. Why was I even? Yeah, that happens sometimes. Let's go back to just testing the basics. It's award-winning idiocy right there. All right. Um, let's regenerate that file. Oh yeah, we're probably not. That bug looks like an intern bug, so we should go and fix that if that's really what it is. Yeah, so that's an intern bug. Um, oh, if I had to guess, let's see here. Okay, so it's interning all of this stuff. Oh, I think I know what it is. Um, Um, oh, I'm sorry. What was the actual error? Okay, that's clearly a bug of some sort. Um, oh, I see. 
Oh, the other thing I should. Okay, I the other thing I should do power of two masking. So. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, A critical failure. I mean, this almost feels like it's just running out of memory or something. Um, yeah, I, I can do unconditional masking. You're right for the uh, for the increment rather than the check. But let me let me just figure out what's going on. Um, Did I fill it in debug? I think I did, right? Yeah. Uh, let's. Let me see which one it was, so I can go there the next time. It's four. So it's the four keyword. And what's the capacity of this thing? So it had to grow. I guess this might have been its first growth uh, after the initial. Uh, right. So it has length 16. Capacity, so it just reached 50% capacity. And we're trying to grow it, and now for some reason, for some reason, it's not letting us do this. This is very. It must be because we're overwriting the heap or something. Otherwise, I just don't understand why. Um, because at this point, we're just doing the calloc. It's not even a realloc or anything. It's just a calloc. Look at the existing table more. Uh, Thirty-two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Unfortunately, I can't use address sanitizer on Windows, and I can't even use it under Whistle. I should get set, set a proper VM up, but yeah. Um, we should be able to figure this out just the old-fashioned way, even though it's a pretty bizarre bug. Or at least the manifestation is a little bit weird. So it's using the, the debug heap, which presumably has all kinds of... Um, Presumably has all kinds of sanity checks for checking overridden stuff. So where are we writing to data here? I we have the arena allocator, um, but I can't imagine that's the issue. 
if we're over here. Um, yeah, grow function. It's literally just inside the catalog. Why would it complain about that? I mean, the parameters to this function look totally fine. Like 128 and 8, that's not a problem, right? Um, look good. It could be that I'm doing a memory overwrite here, but I would be surprised if those memory areas were adjacent enough to cause a uh, clobber of that. I mean, it could be maybe I'm not doing this right, for example. Uh, offset of string. Len plus one, len plus the zero terminator. Copy to that buffer from start by len, zero terminate it. Um, oh, so someone's mentioning 318. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I missed that in the in the backlog of chat. But that was a good catch. Oh, that's definitely a bug. But now, okay, so now it has still complaining about not being able to find the thing. Um, all right, let's see here. So yeah, it complains about this, which is definitely an interning bug because it means it means it's not finding, or it's not detecting it as a keyword. I think was the original manifestation of that bug. But I can kind of, I think because we changed some of that stuff. Um, because the, the assumption of the way we do keyword detection, I mean, let's set a breakpoint here. Um, let's, um, so type def, and then some other stuff, and then we should have you know, um, let's do some sanity checks in the Lexer test. Is that not getting called right now? I think we remove those from the test set. It's probably not the best idea. So all of these are getting detected as key names, keyword names. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go and look at the actual bug then and step through that code. So token, right, so token is a name. It hasn't been detected as a keyword. Um, so clearly that is not working. What is it, next token? What's this deal in there?
so start points to func um, yeah, so that's not hitting the right slot no I, I I fixed one of the problems but now it's not uh, hitting the right slots. I guess one difference is maybe I'm using get hashed in one case and not in the other. No, I'm using the same function. Um, let's look at that again. So this should have been hitting the, the keywords, the keyword entries. Um, so what is it called? Interns. <clears throat> so interns has a bunch of entries. Turns dot bounds. Um, That's right. Um, should be doing something in both cases. What are we doing in init keywords? It should be possible to have a simple standalone test for this. Let's test. Um, Yeah, so that doesn't work. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of tautological. This is also not really the right test, I guess. Um, um, what's an easy way of doing it? I guess let's, okay, let's do it. Let's do it even more simple. I feel like even, um, what do we call it, intern test, I feel like even this should trigger it. I'm not following this right now. Is it because it's reallocating? It's growing. No, the, so the arena is now reallocating. That should be stable. Um, So this is a low, which 
55. This is not clever. What was someone saying about the, the hash function? I mean, I don't. I, I doubt that should really matter. Make your mix function the identity. Just return the input. Yeah, let me. Um, I need food. I can feel myself not really thinking super clearly. Um, I mean, sure. Pretty much. I mean, literally anything should should work as long as it's consistent. It might lead to more collisions than necessary. Um, let's see. Let's look at the arguments. So uh, the hash argument is always the last one for these functions with explicit arguments. Um, we, we do indeed do that here. Key val, key val. Are we executing this code right now, by the way? Um, Let me try this test again. So if this wasn't working, thunk keyword. Let's go go through that. And if you look at interns dot dot keys, well, I guess let, let's do dot vals, and so this should be um, something like this. That entry is funk. That's index thirty-nine. That is that slot. Um, let's 
so it's hashing to the right slot, but clearly the key is not right. No, so it is returning that. I thought it wasn't doing that before. Wait, what? Wasn't this inconsistent from the other time? I'll just rerun that a, a couple of times. I could have sworn that was inconsistent. Oh, it was really, it was the mix function? How can that be an issue, though? So, so I mean, I, like, I could just skip over it, but that, that's what I don't get. So we, we, we quote-unquote, fix the mix function. But any any function that's consistent should always give the same value, even if it's quote-unquote wrong, right? Um, it's not invertible. But like even for example, suppose this was some kind of really bad mixer that always returned the value zero. As long as it's a mathematical function of x, they should wind up in the same slot. That's the part I didn't get. Yes, yeah, so this doesn't work either. There's another issue. It's not just the mixing function, I feel like. So who's that guy? <laughs> um, let's see. Like my point is, like even if this thing always returns zero, it shouldn't change behavior, right? Like it, it should just generate a ton of collisions. So it's, it, I guess my point is, it's kind of a side effect of the collisions. Where are my comments? There is not very much code here that really demands comments. Stuff like this demands a comment. <clears throat> um, so maybe, yeah, maybe the right thing to do actually is to set it to zero because that way we don't have to worry about weirdness um, for that. Let's see here. Um, let's go back to that. Okay, that's looping forever, I think. Oh, this is actually expected. It's just because it's n squared. Okay, yeah, so that's exactly what I wanted to trigger. Um, Now I have a better chance of debugging it. Um, so funk is there. We still have this huge array stuff, and, you can, and we can see everything is one and it is in one big chain. That's right. So it should, when we do this thing here. I would expect it to start at index zero. Oh, I think we're using inconsistent hashes somehow. Okay, okay. Still in between the range. Let's make this be like that and try again. I'm really lo loading up the entire symbol server symbols. Okay, I guess we can't make it literally that because it's. Uh, what is that? 
we can make it one. Okay, so that works again. Let's try running uh, the whole program with this degenerate hash table, which should actually work, right? Because it's going, just going to degenerate to a uh, array search. Yeah, so that actually works. So it's something about the string hashing. Am I like reading too many characters or something weird. I from zero up to len. Yeah, no, this this isn't doing anything. Uh, well, it's doing something. I guess it's not actually doing anything in this case, you're right. Um, Try stuffing through here and see what's happening. Type def. So it's zero terminated. Actually, I just thought of something here. Um, I don't think that's what's actually happening, but you have to fix this in any case. You're never allowed to. I'm just going to do it this way because it's never allowed to be zero. Um, Let's do this. So this should have the error, right? Let's try returning that. I mean, it doesn't have to be in the hash function. Ah, oh, this is so basic. I shouldn't really be screwing around with this stuff. It's not necessarily in the hash function. It's just that there's parts of the code that are being exercised, which wasn't being exercised when it's all one big linear chain. Let's just read through the code. Um, Um, size T is 32 bits. I'm on 64 bit, but I don't think stuff like that should be an issue. Um, get in the hash. Do this power of two masking, which should be fine. Um, this must be something really dumb. We do the insertion. If the key slot is empty, we fill it in and return that spot. If it matches, we don't have to fill it in in the key slot. We just have to fill in the value slot and return the same pointer. Otherwise, we step to the next thing. Let's see here. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, this is definitely a little bit suspicious, I guess, but you, I mean, maybe we can write it like this if you want to um, as well. The hash table is never going to be bigger than that, even though we sometimes want to use wider hashes. Ugh. It's going to be something really basic. If I don't find it soon, I'm just going to take a break because this is getting kind of silly. Um. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, that's a really subtle bug. I mean, maybe not subtle, but it took us this long. I see exactly what it is. So the problem is when it's regrowing, it doesn't know what to use for that computation. So it assumes it can rehash it because it doesn't store embedded hashes. Um, and one way to fix that, okay, l l let's change, let's change this. Um, even though, I mean, it's going to be even less cache friendly, but at this point I just want to make it work. Um, okay. And so now, entries.key, uh, entries.val, Thanks, Sean. That was a very good catch. Um, Uh, key, let's see, key val hash. Okay, that's something else. We should probably have, have done a proofreading here. Um, actually, let me go read the code before I run it. Uh, let's see here. So each entry. Uh, 
uh, key value and a hash. We have a big array of those. When we do a hash lookup, um, we do this indexing, go through the entries. This one is wrong. Um, that's probably the bug. And void stars strike again. All right, and then for this, we now I just have one allocation and uh, we're doing the rehashing. If we have a slot there, then we rehash the whole thing. Uh, and here, get the ith entry. If it's empty, then we increment the size of the table and we put this in. And this is right in this case because you want to have a pointer to a pointer so someone can fix that later if they want to. All right. Okay. Whew. All right. That worked. Um, yeah, I'm just going to, I mean, I, I just wanted to get it to work. This this, this definitely handles this, uh, even if maybe for the specific case that is a better alternative. Let's remove this comment since it's not really mysterious. Yeah, so let's turn on the hash functions. Well, they were actually on, I think. Um, all right. Hallelujah. Oh, am I still returning zero? Oh, you're right. Oh, I don't think we're actually using this right now. Yeah, we're not actually calling this anywhere, I think, are we? Oh yeah, we're using it for these, but we're not actually calling those these functions right now, I think. Um, but anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's go back to our original plan. So that was that medium-sized file. Okay, point two, and it's actually doing the right thing because we can see the compile message. And so now that's, what was it, 16? That took a, a full second before. Okay, that's still really slow. But now maybe it's something else. It's also possible the hash function is complete shit. Or that there's an infinite loop. Um, let's see what's going on there. Let's make it smaller again, and uh, do like this. Okay, so it's just extremely slow. Let's see what's happening. Um, bum, bum, bum.
Okay, so um, this is actually a huge improvement. Where's next token? Anyway, now it's the other symbol table. So, okay, I thought, well, so you can see this, this intern range thing is now really small, and now we're just bottlenecked on the next thing, which is the other linear search we have. Um, so that's actually good, good news. So let's fix that. <clears throat> Wait, who said 87? Let's see, we can rerun it. The, the, over the over a minute i mean i'm using a smaller test file so it's not exactly one to one but you can see that before we were totally dominated by stir enter and range and now we're in resolve name which i'm guessing the reason we don't see sim get is just because this thing is inlined like if you look at uh I don't know if you can actually see the assembly code here. But yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, you can see this thing is getting inlined. Otherwise, there would be another uh, element in the call stack. So let's just fix that. And so right now we're doing this. We want to replace the to remember what we call it whatever buff push global sims like we want to um, all this global sim stuff is going to go into a hash table so this is going to be a hash table and this is going to be map get global sims name um, this has already been interned so it can just be a pointer hash table at this point and instead of a buff push it's a um, sim name to sim I mean, we should to be honest we should have some sort of sim global input um, I guess just like this. No, because you want to. Oh, I think that's right, actually. Let's do it like this. Why is it saying different const qualifiers? Oh, 
Oh, I see. It's because something like this. No, that, I guess that's not right either. Shouldn't it just be... I kind of don't want that. Eh, let's just do the cast. I don't want to deal with that. Thinking about that right now. Just want to get some respectability of performance back. Typecast cannot convert. All right, so this should be sim global put. And this should be um, 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 this should, yeah, it would be nice if there's a, something that didn't expose the hash table const stuff. Um, boom, boom, boom. Someone saying about making it as fast as we like. I mean, the thing is, there's a difference between micro-optimization and linear versus quadratic time. Um... All right. Like quadratic time is never acceptable, right? For something that's not more than a handful. Um, I kind of don't really, it's kind of nasty. I have to expose this to spite the bullet. Um, map entry, send entries dot i. If not entry key, then continue. Otherwise, entry val. Uh, I guess I should maybe use the same logic here. Yeah, I might I might make a hash table iterator, but for now this is uh, just the most straightforward way to do it. Um, I mean, the chances of this working, let, let me just look at it. Let me just look at it to um, to make sure that it's not totally insane. So this is a map, and it maps from interned char pointers to symbols. And so when we do a symbol lookup, we first traverse the stack of local symbols, linear, the linear traversal, and then if that doesn't hit anything, we go and look in the um, the global sims map. 
using the intern pointer. Um, and then we have this function for putting stuff there, which grabs the name and says, yep, that looks good. Uh, this does sets up, sets up everything. This does a traversal over everything in the table that's live. So it goes over the whole capacity range um, and for each entry checks that it's not empty. And if it's not empty, then we do that. Okay. Let me turn the debug back on so we can catch any assert failures. Okay, that seems to have worked. Um, we should so how big was this file? Uh, was it uh, ion test two ion? So it seems to be faster, half a second, which is still really slow, to be honest. Only two megabytes, way too slow, but uh, still faster. And hopefully, hopefully we're rid of, I guess, the quadratic time stuff, which is really uh, a big issue. Right. So it was. Ha it should be four times slower if it's linear time, and that's almost exactly what it was, I think. Um, so let's go and do the profile run again. All right. Um, why is it not rebuilding on release? I don't think that's right. I can also see that it still runs. Um, okay, let's do the profile run. <laughs> All right, this is pretty good. Actually, this is another linear search that should be replaced by a hash table. But uh, now we're spending most of our time in printf, which is good in a sense, maybe bad in a sense. But uh, this is what progress looks like. Now it's starting to become someone else's problem. But uh, we could easily fix this while we're at it. So if you remember, this is. Um, Another, this was our pointer interning, and right now that's using a linear thing, and that would be easy to make into a map as well. Um, so let's, and, and let me save the session for now rather than just deleting it. Uh, so yeah, let's let's save the session and go and just fix up, like I'm not even going to do all the cases, but let's fix the, what was it, type putter. Let's just speed up this one case since, this, since it was hitting the profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a map now. And uh, the way this is going to work is basically um, cached. Uh, we're going to do a map get on cache putter types. We're going to use this as the key. And um, you know, if it hits, then we just return the associated thing. And actually, we don't need to have the element stored here because it's part of the key. So we can actually just um, do like this. And this all goes away. And this becomes the key is LM. 
and this is the bow. Okay, that still runs. Let's make sure it still works. Well, if it didn't work, we would get all kinds of type errors when you try to do those pointer assignments. So let's just say it's, it works, even though we haven't super carefully verified it. Um, and let's do another profile run. And then I'll probably take a break because it's almost lunchtime and I didn't get breakfast in the first place. Um, So yeah, do you see how the profile is changing? We didn't see malloc on top before, which is interesting. Um, well, I guess malloc was here, and now it's actually on top. So malloc is another thing we're going to optimize because we don't we have the arena allocator for. Um, for AST nodes, but we're not using it for all the type stuff. We're still using system malloc for that. So that's another easy thing to get rid of. Now, this thing is, this is the thing that's probably going to be a little bit harder to get rid of. Um, but anyway, this is starting to look better. Yeah, I don't know why the sprint F got cheaper. That's a little bit mysterious. Well, I don't, I'm, it's, it could also be the malloc got more expensive or because, well, let's see. Is it's just relative, right? Or mil let's see how the milliseconds were. 71. Yeah, that's a huge difference. I wonder if something w wasn't warm. That just doesn't make sense. Let me do another one run. I think I used the same dataset size. Um, let me make sure something weird didn't happen with the output. Mm. I mean, it's possible I totally broke something, and the reason it's it's it, and it's actually getting called less or something like that. But um, I think I'm going to probably stop around now because we got a bunch of leverage out of this hash table already we got rid of the at least the notable n squared stuff in the profile there's still some cases where we're doing linear searches for the type interning but the type interning may have to change for other reasons anyway so there, I don't I don't feel like going through all those cases and replacing them uh, actually one of the cases for the type interning that's annoying is for functions because function type interning is a little bit like string interning and then you're dealing with a variable amount of data and so you can't use a just a single pointer as an index. You have to somehow do something like the way we do our string and turning, where you know you compress everything down to a 64-bit key and then chain off of that. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Well, let's try that. Um, let me just copy that to a temp buffer. So it still runs. Um, yeah, I mean, that is so it says. 500 milliseconds, which is huge. So it, it feels like there is a behavioral change that's accounting for that. Because it's 70. That is bizarre. Yeah, that, that seems like a bug. Um, that's too good to be true. That's cutting things down from 
how much? 540 to 140. That's exactly 400 less calls. Oh yeah, diffing the output. That's a good idea. Um, uh, old. Or not ion. Um, let's see, ion. Let's just make sure it's run. Let me just look at the code to make sure there's nothing crazy. It's doing the lookup based on LM. All right. Oh, actually, I think that wasn't quite right. Let me uh, do it like this. I, the way that I, I think I didn't recompile the GCC version. So um, let me make sure I do it properly. Okay, so now the old code should be in effect. Okay. Now the new code should be in effect. <laughs> really, they don't have. New diff, what is it called? Okay, hang on. Uh, M says Pac Man diff. Okay. Uh, oh, diff utils. Okay. It's working, right? Yeah. Seems to be generating the same thing. That's really weird. I wonder if it's just the profiler is not able to properly attribute some of that, but that seems weird. Unless I screwed up the way I was getting those exemplar files, but I don't think so. Let me do get another profile. I mean, this is getting run, right? Yeah. Okay, longer test file. One second is quite a long time, but um, yeah, we, we can make something much bigger. Um,
Yeah, so now it's, I mean, this isn't necessarily surprising. You would expect, well, I guess it depends on why Malg is being called. Um, yeah, all right, so this was with the new code. Let me try moving to the other code for this bigger file and see if there's a notable difference. We are on release, yep. After this, I'm going to, to shut off the stream and go eat because I'm, I'm, I'm in that part of, of the Twilight Zone where I, I'm not really able to think very well and I'm, I'm barely able to operate a computer. So I'm, I, don't, I, I, I want to get to the bottom of, of this stuff, but it could be just weird profiler stuff. But uh, yeah, it, Sean's idea of verifying the cache is hitting the same number of times before and after is definitely a good, uh, good sanity check as well. Fourth, four thousand, uh, forty-four, twenty-two, forty-four. Not quite the same number, um, but that's within variance range, I would say. Right? It's in milliseconds. It's not the number of calls. I guess I, I should look if there's a call count I could look at as well. But that looks definitely like it's the same work being done. It's just in this case, this thing is drastically slower. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to call it a day for, for that. Um, so, yeah. What did we end up doing in the extra stream? I guess mostly just doing the hash table and the uh, and the profiling and getting things to go non-quadratic time for these big files. So not not too bad. We, we spent a little bit too long flailing around on that stupid hash table bug, but stuff like that happens when you're programming. Um, someone's asking about would something work as an iterator for the map? Let's see. Yeah, I mean you could do a, a iterator macro or something like that. Uh, I'll maybe consider that later. All right. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm going to go over the code before I check it in, just to make sure there's no uh, junk. And I have to remove the two versions of the type putter constructor thing, caching constructor. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, that was, uh, except for the hash table bug, that was okay. So, uh, yep, um, I guess tomorrow there's no stream, but Friday, Friday there will be a stream. So see you then.